Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's Signature FD Investment Audio Cast that we call Cutting Through the Noise. I'm Tony Welch, Chief Investment Officer at Signature FD. So last week, markets pulled back much of their post-election rally from the week prior, and we discussed last week that the initial response to elections doesn't always hold in the intermediate to long term. And it's more important to take a longer term perspective to identify winners and losers. Throughout the week, we got some impactful data around inflation and economic activity. And we'll recap those data points and spend a little time on what we're watching ahead here today. So let's first look at the inflation picture. Both the consumer price index or CPI and the producer price index or PPI rose by 0.2% for the month of October, and they were up 2.6% and 2.4% year over year, respectively. It looks like what we would call that disinflationary process in each has somewhat stalled for now. We've now settled into an inflation range between 2 and 3% annually. Additionally, import inflation increased by 0.3% for the month of October. Range-bound inflation in that 2 to 3% area suggests that we might see a more cautious Federal Reserve here, especially at their policy meeting in December. And in fact, the CME is showing a 55% chance of a 25 basis point cut in interest rates. So another uh, cut in this year is far from a done deal. Now, as we look at next year, that year-over-year change in inflation, that could ease Interestingly enough, if we got equal 0.2% monthly prints on the CPI for the next five months, inflation would be at an even 2% by the end of March. So the surge to roughly 9% inflation in 2022 had a number of factors at play, but some of those have eased in the past two years. Today, the persistence of inflation at that 2 to 3% level can be more attributed to robust economic activity. Retail sales are a really good example of that. Retail sales grew 0.4% in October. Today, the Atlanta Federal Reserve is tracking a 2.5% real GDP growth rate for Q4 using real-time incoming data like retail sales. Last week, economic momentum was also corroborated by the Empire Manufacturing Survey, which surged over 43 points to its best level in three years, and also the NFIB Small Business Confidence Index, which reached its highest level since February of 2022. So looking at the bigger picture, inflation remains stable and economic growth is solid. That's generally a good environment for being overweight on stocks, which is where we are today. Although returns might slow a little bit in 2025 compared to if we were getting a more robust, accelerating uh, economic growth scenario. So if growth and inflation remain stable in the coming quarters, it would also be a good environment for uh, fixed income. So let's turn our attention to what to watch in the week ahead. We're going to get some housing data, including home builder confidence, housing starts, permits, and existing home sales. It's important to see if rising mortgage rates are continuing to have a negative impact on the housing uh, activity. On Friday, we'll also get the flash services and manufacturing PMIs from S&P Global. It's been a decent earnings season overall, particularly outside the energy sector. However, we need to see if earnings can accelerate to justify current market valuations. And we won't get a lot more news on the earnings front until January, but one key earnings report to go here for Q3 is NVIDIA's earnings report on Wednesday. And that'll be significant given NVIDIA's past rapid growth and the size of the company in most major uh, domestic benchmarks that we track. So join us next week to get an update on housing activity and those purchasing managers indices. And as always, thanks for tuning in and have a great week ahead.